If you're just getting started in Venetian plaster and want to learn some basic tips for application, stick around. Hey, we're Blake and Melanie. We're on a journey to discover the things that fill life with joy, find more balance in the everyday, and even pursue some of our crazy ideas. We're sharing our story in the hopes that it'll encourage you to know yours and inspire you to go after your own big ideas. So we're inviting you along for it all. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and like this video if you wanna see more Venetian plaster content. We also have more in the playlist, so make sure to check those out as well. So we're gonna show you some basic techniques for applying Venetian plaster. This is gonna be geared towards beginners, so if you're just starting out and wanna learn kind of the basic steps of applying the Venetian plaster to a surface, then this is the video for you. We are gonna start on just a board here. Um, this is just a normal wood board. We've actually already plastered over this board. So as you can see, uh, there actually is already plaster on here. So you can kind of see what that's gonna look like. Um, I'm gonna go over this with a different color so that we can kind of see the differences. When you're first starting out and you're learning to apply Venetian plaster, I find applying to a board is very nice because that gives you just uh, the freedom to mess up. If you're applying it directly to your wall or uh, directly to any surface and you haven't really practiced, obviously that's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So I always recommend just going to grab a board at any hardware store. That's a good way to practice. So just buy a little bit of Venetian plaster, go ahead and kind of like learn the basic techniques of applying and get the sense of the feel for that. So I'm just gonna kind of run through some of the basic techniques you're gonna have to learn just for the classic Venetian style look. So the two tools that you're obviously gonna need are a little uh, joint knife here. Uh, this is a four inch joint knife, nothing special about this. This is gonna be for getting your plaster out of your bucket onto your trowel. Um, your trowel is what you're gonna use to apply. I have like a trapezoid kind of looking trowel here. Um, you'll see a lot of them more in a square shape. There's not really like a, a specific trowel you have to get. These ones are really nice because they have the edge so you can get into the corners easier. But if you have like a square trowel or any other shape of trowel, it'll work just fine. So we have plaster today from a company called San Marco. This is their Marmarino Classico. So again, it's a little bit coarser of a Marmarino or Venetian plaster, and it'll give us that kind of satin, like eggshell look, not not super shiny, but uh, when we burnish it, it'll give it a nice nice look. Uh, from directly straight on, it'll look very matte. So I just have a small bucket here. I'm gonna take the lid off. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our joint knife here. I usually like to work with kind of our two hands. I'm right-handed, so I'll put the joint knife in my right hand. Don't have to do that. Um, if you can do it the other way around, it's actually better. So I'm just gonna take a little bit and put it on my trowel. When you're starting out, I definitely wouldn't put that much on your trowel. So like, I'm just gonna put that much on, right? Like that's barely any. And I'm just gonna kind of put my, my knife in there. So I would just start in the middle. Uh, this isn't how you typically would wanna tackle a wall, but like when you're starting out, um, just to kind of get the first strokes going, I would just kind of start kind of in the open so you don't, you don't have to worry about the edges. So I'm just gonna kind of go here. And there you have it. So in order to get the plaster on, you kind of have to angle it flatter to the surface. And then I'm gonna put it on like this and you can see it's kind of thick right here. It's kind of thick. So I'm gonna come back and just kind of drag it back off and kind of go like that, just smooth it out. And so you always wanna be moving in circular shapes. So in curved motions. And that's kind of how that's gonna look. In this point, you can kind of see it's kind of spread out on my trowel. Um, there's some stuff on the edge here. So I'm gonna take my knife again, and I'm gonna just kind of get the stuff off my knife first, but I'm gonna kind of go back up here, take it off, clean my trowel. I'm gonna grab the stuff on the other end here, go like that. And so now, now I have a clean trowel. I probably need more plaster on there, so I'm gonna go add, add some to that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it right back on. I'm gonna incorporate it together like that. I would just get, get used to kind of doing this motion as well. That kind of helps you just practice getting the plaster where you want it. Controlling is kind of a big thing in the plaster game. Uh, you definitely want to be able to control your product. So again, I'm not, I'm not doing that much. Um, as you can see, the plaster, plaster pretty much stays on your trowel, so I wouldn't worry too much about 
you know, holding it any which way, but just kind of get used to the plaster there. So once you're used to kind of how it spreads here, I would typically practice moving from left to right. So I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna move from the left side to the right side so I can work back into my plaster. If you're left-handed, you probably wanna work the other way so you can work back into your plaster. So you always wanna work from dry to wet. So you're always gonna be wanting to work back into your wet plaster. This center part was just to kind of show you to kind of get an idea of, of what it looks like. But we're gonna go ahead and move this off to the side here. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start on the left side. So when you work on the left side, you always wanna use the same side of your trowel. So you're gonna have to actually flip your trowel over. And this is a good thing to practice because it's not, not gonna be your typical hold, it's gonna be upside down actually. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it like this. And then I'm not gonna start right at the edge here because when you do that, you're gonna get a big glob on the edge. So I'm just gonna start off the edge and as you can see, that put a big glob there. And now, now that it's smoothed out on my trowel, I'm gonna go, go to the edge where I wanna go, where I wanted to go in the first place, and go ahead and pull on there. And again, remember, always do these kind of curved motions here. And then I'm gonna come and grab some more here. Gonna kinda go ahead and kinda work this a little bit. This plaster is a little older, so I'm kind of having a little bit of issues with it, with some of the, the drier spots here. So I'm gonna come and do the same with the top here. You wanna work from top to bottom as well. Again, circular motions here. Okay, so now I have this corner up here. So I can, what I can do here, since I'm gonna to wanna to do it upside down here, I'm gonna put it on this far end here. So I'm gonna put it at the top here. And like I said, since these have, these have a, a tip here, we can, actually, we can actually get up here and do this right in here like this. And here's a good example of like, I probably needed to start out a little further. So I'm gonna come back here and then just use my, use my knife and kinda of clean this up here. The reason why that's applicable is you're gonna have trim probably on your walls or your ceiling. And when you go in with a big glob, it's gonna, it's gonna get on your trim. So you really don't wanna do that. Even if you have it taped off, um, it, it can sometimes just get on the side and that kind of just creates a really messy look. So the idea here being is you wanna learn control of your product and just make sure that you're keeping stuff as clean as possible. It's not the most clean process. Like there is, there is some nuance to it. So the more you can kind of control and kind of manage your product and where it goes, the better. So, so right here, we're, we're pretending that this is our, our left wall here and this is maybe our ceiling. And so now I'm just gonna go grab some more here. And we're gonna just kind of center that up again for, for myself. Um, and now, so I'm worked off the wall here. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the dry spot. So I don't, wanna, I don't wanna start in here because this is all smooth and nice. I wanna work from the dry to the wet. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna just apply a big, big blob like that and then push it in. So I wanna work to my, to my right. And then I'm gonna work down from my top here. And then you can kind of feel free to like go over stuff that you've already done as well. You don't want to go over it too many times because you know, it's already smooth, right? You've already smoothed this out. So if I'm, I'm going in there and trying to smooth something out again, like you're just going to make marks and it's going to drag and it's going to be slightly dry. So it's just really not a good process. So I'm going to work down again from my top, top here, get this off my, and then I'm going to work back this way here. So as you can see, I'm always working in, in kind of curves here. So all your, all your strokes should really kind of overlap and just kind of do this kind of motion. So you don't want to, you don't want to have any straight lines. Uh, it's okay if there's a little bit of texture going on. That's going to that's gonna allow your walls to kind of like have a little bit of a, you know, of a look. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too worried about that. But for the most part, it should look fairly smooth. Um, you shouldn't have big kind of divots or texture going on at this point.
So again, I'm gonna get into this corner here. I'm gonna put it up on my top of my trowel. I'm gonna start slightly off the wall here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and kinda put some on here. Kinda had a big dry spot there. So again, I'm just gonna kinda get up here, drag down. So now we're, we're almost all the way down to the bottom here. So I'm gonna start back over on my left side. Really, really wanna be working from left to right. Um, again, I'm right-handed, so that's the way I would work. So now I gotta flip it over again. And then kind of work up from the bottom here. Looks like I got some glass spot in here. And obviously, if you had a baseboard, you wouldn't be able to do that. So you really wanna practice working from your edges with, uh, with it kind of the right way. Pretend there's a wall here. Pretend there's, a, there's a, a piece of trim so that you're always practicing kind of these, these techniques. Because obviously right now, I could just kind of do the same technique over the whole thing because there's no edge. Um, and sometimes that might be the case, but for the most part, on a wall, you're gonna wanna be working like as if there's something here, so. Um, so yeah, so now I got this, this edge down here. Um, got this edge over here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy. All right. So there you have it. That is your first coat. And again, it should be fairly smooth. Um, for the most part, this is looking fairly smooth. Some of these, some of these edges obviously are not gonna be that smooth because of the way this board is. And um, obviously when there's edges, it, you know, it's gonna clump a little bit. But um, some of this kind of small texture up here, um, you can come back with your, your knife a little later and knock that down. But for the most part, this is gonna be how your first coat looks. Um, nothing too special right now. Once this dries, we'll apply our second coat and we'll come back and show you what that looks like. All right, so now our first coat is dry. Obviously you wanna wait for it to be completely dry. If you have any like high points on your, your wall or your, in my case, this board, uh, you can go ahead and scrape them off. It's not a big deal uh, if there's something you don't like. Um, I'm just gonna kinda come up here and kinda get some of that off there. Um, you know, you don't have to do a lot of this. You know, if you apply it smooth to begin with, you won't really have to do all any of that, but don't feel bad if you have to come back and kind of, you know, knock down something really quick. So that's looking really good, nice and smooth. Obviously there's still some texture going on, which is great. I'm just gonna kind of brush some of this off. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do our second coat. So our second coat is going to be put on and compressed into our first coat. So the idea is that you're compressing it in and really filling in some of these, all these holes and kind of the texture from below. So it's gonna be tight, um, meaning that you're gonna kind of scrape most of it back off. It's gonna be a thin layer and you're gonna wanna use some muscle to kind of compress it into the first layer. So we'll go ahead and do that. So the technique is relatively the same. The only difference in applying it is obviously the compression, but also um, the, the angle that you're gonna be pulling it back off on is gonna be a little steeper. So that just means that you're gonna be dragging more of it back off. So again, we'll go ahead and start in our left to right. I like to apply Venetian plaster. By applying some of the product just directly on the wall like that, and then coming back and pulling it back off in that curved motion. So as you can see, we got a nice curved motion. So the difference on this second coat is we're gonna be uh, pulling it back off a little tighter than we were used to and compressing it more in as we go. So if I apply it on, 
as you can see, my angle is uh, is pretty steep here, so it's gonna drag a lot more of it off, and I'm, I'm applying more pressure as I pull it on so that I'm not getting a thick coat uh, compared to the first coat. So the first coat, you know, you might, you might be more like this, right? And you might leave on a little thickness, but the second coat, we don't really want that. We wanna pull a lot more of it off and then push into the product just to really get it smoothed in. So that's gonna be kind of your only difference on your second coat. Um, there's not really like a lot of difference in technique. You keep doing the circular motions and yeah, that's pretty much it. Top to bottom still. And on the second coat, if you're on a wall, you wanna work probably like a, you know, a three foot distance and then you're gonna go back and burnish. And we'll show you that after I get all the plaster on. All right, so we got that second coat done. Um, like I said, uh, you're gonna wanna stop in about this kind of distance, maybe a little larger if you're doing a wall. Um, and then you're gonna wanna come back and kind of do a burnish kind of right away. Since you've already kind of applied that second coat in a very compressive way, this is really just about applying more pressure, but then also adding friction to the plaster itself. And that'll kind of bring out those shiny spots. So in this case, it doesn't get that shiny because this is more of a matte look anyways, but in other cases, uh, it'll get really shiny with your burnishing. I have a specific burnishing trowel, which is a little bit smaller, uh, more square, and that just allows you to apply even pressure while you're burnishing, but you can definitely just use your normal trowel, uh, whatever you're using to apply your plaster in the first place to do the burnishing as well. So I'll just go ahead and show you that. It's always good to have some sort of rag or a paper towel or something just to kind of wipe off the edges of your burnishing trowel uh, as you're going, just in case you get a little bit on your trowel as you do. Um, the idea is not to pull any of the plaster back off. So if you're, pull if you're really pulling plaster back off, then you're too wet. This should be in circular motions. You're applying pressure here. Um, and then any extra plaster that does come off, there'll be a little bit um, you'll just want to wipe off so you're not creating any like scratches in your plaster. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you that. Then stop. So you can see like I have a little bit of plaster, just a little bit, and that's perfect. So you just want to kind of wipe that off so that you're not re-scratching anything you've done. So I got a little bit more there, so I'm just gonna wipe that off. Burnishing is gonna bring out that shine. It's gonna bring out the texture. The more you burnish, the more texture that's gonna come out. So if you want a lot of texture, you're gonna have to burnish a lot. If you don't want that much, I would burnish less. You do wanna go in every direction. So, you know, straight across, up and down, uh, curved directions. All right, so you can kind of see any parts that you missed by kind of coming down and looking at, at where the shine is. So I can see that I'm pretty well, pretty even here. Um, there's maybe a few spots that I'm seeing that I could burnish some more, uh, but you know, plaster just naturally has that kind of uh, shiny, high, shiny, low kind of look. So it's not gonna all be perfectly shiny unless you have a high gloss plaster. So this is gonna be a very, more of a matte look, but I'll just go ahead and hit some of those spots a little bit again. Always making sure to stop, make sure my trowel is clean. And then, yeah, double checking down here. Pick up your board a little bit and look at the angle here. I'm happy with how that's looking. So I'm happy with how the texture looks and the shine. So I'm gonna stop there and then we'll let it dry and then I'll show you the final look. All right, so our board is finally dry and this is the completed look we have. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hold this up for you guys just to kind of see. So you can kind of see some of the texture there. Obviously the color we chose is a lighter color. So um, it's not gonna be overly visible, but um, yeah. This is kind of what the finished product looks like. So I'm gonna hold this up for you guys and just so you can kind of see some of the, the sheen here. Hopefully you can see that. And that's just, that's just from the burnishing that we did. Hopefully watching someone apply the plaster was helpful for you guys. Um, I know for me starting out, 
I watched a ton of videos on just people applying it and trying to learn what they were doing. So hopefully this is helpful in that regard. I would definitely recommend practicing on a board before you go to the wall. I think it'll help you give it a sensation for the, the trowel and just kind of working with the product. I know it can be kind of tricky because uh, when you're first starting out, you're not really sure how to like manage the product. And so I think this is a great way to like practice and learn those techniques. I know some of these things are seem very simple, like learning how to grab the plaster out of the bucket and put it on the trowel. But trust me, when you go to do a wall and like when your plaster starts drying on the wall and you got to keep going and moving, it's going to be very important that you guys know how to use and manage your product well. So anyways, hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them below. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video and we will see you guys next time.